All right, I want to talk a little bit more about the May 2024 core update and a little bit about Google's generative AI search capabilities. This is a great article from Google talking about their search with generative AI. And so we were sort of warned back in May that this was going to be something coming up. And if you read this article, you can quickly see why Google may have gotten rid of a lot of these informational blogs. And when I say gotten rid of, now some that were creating content at scale definitely got hit with a manual penalty. For a lot of people, they just disappeared out of Google's index. So their pages are still somewhere on Google, but but in the SERPs, they may be you know, ranking like 100 or 150, you know, who knows? But basically nobody's finding your, your content anymore. And I think part of the reason is because Google's getting ready to roll out this generative AI search. And basically they're doing a lot of what we were doing with our blog posts. Now, I don't think as well. I think even some of the pure AI written posts that I've looked at answer questions better than what I'm seeing in generative AI search with Google. But again, is it enough information to answer the question? For a lot of people, it will be. So let's take a look at something like this kind of search. So if you go into Google Labs, you can use this generative AI search that they have available. It's sort of in, the, in a beta mode. I put in as blogging dead because of AI. And what I get is this return here, you know, it gives you a paragraph that you would have probably put in the introduction of your blog post about is blogging dead because of AI. You get a couple of different links to websites. If you click show more, it basically gives you three more paragraphs that probably would have been in your blog post. Now, what you're not getting here is somebody's firsthand experience as a blogger, right? So maybe you've been blogging for five years or 10 years or 15 years, whatever. That is missing here. So does it matter to most people? Maybe, maybe not. But the whole point is right here, you see quite a bit of data that Google typically was not returning. And in a normal Google search, you would just see links to various places to go read about this topic. And you would go do that and pick the one that looked like it was going to fit your needs the most. So there's going to be a lot of people when they see information like this, they're not going to go any further. It just depends on the question and how extensive it is and how much information they need. But for a lot of people, this will be enough. So that's going to really affect the amount of organic traffic you might be getting from these informational posts. Let's go ahead and jump over to perplexity.ai. Now I use perplexity quite a bit. I like it better than Google. It gives me a lot of great information. I think that they're doing the same kind of thing that Google is doing. I think they'd like to be Google eventually. Who knows if that can happen, but here's what I'm talking about. Let's say you have this question. Do you need 1,000 subscribers to get paid on YouTube? Now, if we go ahead and run that query, Perplexity is doing something very similar to the generative search that you saw in Google, but much better. We'll let it answer here, and then we'll go through it. So you get an answer that has a lot of good information in it. And of course, you have links to some additional websites. If you look over here at search videos, when you do a search video, it shows you a video that you can watch about that topic. You can do image searches, really wouldn't be applicable here, but you can also see more related information. If you click on tell me more, gives you more video resources, gives you a deeper answer. So you can see, you know, if somebody uses something like perplexity.ai or they're using Google generative search, and of course, Google's gonna roll out even more information where they're going out, they're looking at websites and just pulling this information back for you. You know, this is what you're gonna compete with if you're still writing informational types of blog posts. And the only thing that you can do here is of course in your blog posts, you want to add as much of your personal expertise as you can, your background, your experience, because that's what's going to make your post unique. Now, the problem is going to be, if you're not one of these top sources here, like you see in Perplexity, or perhaps you saw in the Google generative search page that I showed you, 
you know, again, organic traffic will suffer. Here's one that I did. How do you do a custom outline in SEO writing.ai? So this one I found pretty interesting. Now I'm all over the place here. I've got three videos right here that they pulled back. So thank you, Perplexity, for that. But again, here's the answer. And really, it's not the full answer, but it's darn close. So uh, of course, you know, you're not right in SEO writing and you can't see the interface. They show you no images of the interface, but it does take you step by step through everything that you'd need to do to create that custom outline. Again, I think Perplexity has a better model than Google right now. And that's why I use Perplexity for a lot of my searches. But you can see what I'm up against if I want to write, you know, informational blog posts for my website, MikeShuey.com. I've really got to make sure that I'm choosing ones where I can add my expertise. This one I really can't, right? So a blog post on this isn't going to be that useful when somebody can go to a tool like that and get the same information. Now, if they look at my video, which does talk about how to create the custom outlines, then you're going to be able to see it step by step right within the interface. And that's what's bringing a lot of value. And this is where I say, you know, blogging's great and I enjoy blogging and I'm not going to stop blogging. But I think that you need to look at alternative sources like YouTube, for example, to bolster your blogs. So what does this mean? Well, here's what it means. Let's just take a quick look over at my website, like shoey.com. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter. You can do that. I've got discount codes for tools here, my suggested tools. But I wanted to show you this particular blog post. Do you need 1,000 subscribers on YouTube to get paid? Show me the money. This particular blog post has a lot of editing in it. I used Agility Writer to create it. Now, I won't go into all the settings that I used in Agility Writer, but I used the advanced mode. And really why I used advanced mode is I really wanted to unfluff this article. I wanted to pull out all the extra words that a lot of AI articles have in them and make it short, concise, and to the point. And so really what I did after I got the article is I edited this and I added my own firsthand information. So the very first thing is in the introduction. I adjusted the introduction. I wanted to answer the question right away and just say, hey, you don't need a thousand subscribers to make money from your videos. You know, with that information in hand, you can now leave or continue reading to find out how I was making money from my channel long before reaching a thousand subscribers, which is true. So hopefully that's intriguing enough to get some people to read. This is the kind of information that you won't see in Google generative search. They probably wouldn't pull back a paragraph like this and show that. So, you know, understanding YouTube's monetization policies. And one thing I went in here, I talked about how long it took to hit a thousand subscribers. You know, I didn't have any viral videos. After reaching that, you know, I still hadn't met that 4,000 watch hour requirement. And so then I went in and I just talked more about revenue opportunities. I really went in and edited this revenue opportunity section a lot. You know, I talk about ad revenue, but this is something that most people aren't talking about. You know, the ad revenue is really underwhelming unless you have tens of thousands of subscribers. And so my point is, this is the kind of data that you're going to get from a human written article. Even if AI was the foundational piece of it, if you go in and edit and add your expertise and experience, you're not gonna get that from generative search. So the bottom line is, this is the kind of stuff that you're going to need to do when you're doing your editing is adding as much personal experience as you can. Will this ever make it into the top 10 of the SERPs? Maybe not, but I use my website to support my YouTube channel. You know, you can do it vice versa. You can have your website and then use YouTube to support that. But the point is, I'm trying to drive traffic back from YouTube to this site and then give people information that is useful for them and try to bypass the need for so much organic traffic from Google search. And again, you can do that by starting a podcast. You can do that by really taking advantage of Twitter or Facebook pages or Pinterest. It just depends on your niche and how you want to handle it. But my point is, 
we're going to have to come up with some different strategies now because with generative search, a lot of these informational blog posts just are never going to rank very well. And even if they do rank highly, if somebody can go in and see the answer right away, then they may never get to see the post that I write about this. The interesting thing is when I showed you this particular search, so let's just jump back here to perplexity. If I do this search, how does, yeah, let's do, you look at this one. Just to prove my point, how does SEO writing AI's outline editor work. If we click on that, now what's going to happen is they're going to come back with this answer, right? And it's going to be an overview of how to use the editor. Of course, it's not going to be the same as looking at the screen in seowriting.ai and walking through it with somebody, but it does give you plenty of information about that tool. And it's, it's really good information. And so this is what you're up against, right? But this is why I say supporting your blog with YouTube is important because if you look over here, here I have an SEO writing.ai tutorial. I've got another one here. I've got fun with SEO writing.ai. So my point is the two work hand in hand now. And with these generative search tools like Perplexity, what Google is rolling out, and I'm sure there will be many others, we're going to have to look at alternative means for driving traffic back to a website or a blog. And I think supporting your blog with a podcast, with a YouTube channel, with Twitter, all those things are going to make a difference. Now, is that more time consuming? Yes, it is. But that's just the environment we're in right now. I don't think it's going to change. And really, when you build your website or blog, and then you have a YouTube channel and maybe a podcast and Twitter, and a Facebook page. You're doing all the things that a brand would do. And so from the standpoint of brand building, it's really important, but it is more time consuming if you're a solopreneur and you're just out there on your own. Doing all these things is gonna take a lot more time. I think in the end, it's gonna be beneficial for you, especially after this core update that just happened in March. I hope some traffic starts to come back for people, but if it doesn't, we've gotta look for other ways to make this work for us. If you found this helpful, please subscribe. Uh, again, I've got a link to that generative search article from Google in the video description. And I have links to all my tools that I use as well. And I do have discounts on most of those. So if you are looking for an AI writer or SEO optimization tools or keyword tools, you'll see the ones that I like and you can go and check those out. So until next time, take care.